Hey, how's it going today? This is Scott over at Ready Squirrel, ReadySquirrel.com. Smash that like button, thumbs up, and comment down below. Uh, today we're going to be co covering uh, best wheat berries for long-term uh, storage. Wheat berries is basically wheat with the a wheat a grain of wheat with the husk removed. Uh, wheat berries are a powerhouse in nutrition, capable of storing for decades in your emergency pantry. This article is being written as uh, as I plan my own emergency grain storage. Hopefully, you'll find this information helpful helpful as you plan yours. Uh, best wheat berries for long term storage. Hard wheat berries are the best for long-term storage because they provide more protein than soft wheat berries. Due to the high gluten, uh, gluten protein levels, 12 to 15 percent, hard wheat makes a superior leavened or yeast-made bread, which is essential if you're eating, uh, eating it as a staple food. Are soft wheat berries bad for long-term storage? Uh, soft wheat is excellent for long-term storage. However, there are things to consider. Soft wheat is used primarily to make uh, batter for foods like flat, flatbreads, biscuits, pastries, pancakes. And hard wheat is used more to make rising dough for things like bread. Because soft wheat has lower gluten levels, it doesn't make big fluffy yeast bread unless mixed with hard wheat. Also, you're getting less bang for your buck when it comes to protein. If you plan on eating mostly flatbreads in a survival situation, you know, things like bannock or pita bread, this isn't as much of a consideration. Still, still, again, you'll be getting less protein unless you add protein to your batter or eat flatbread with high uh, protein staple like beans. So uh, basically, hard wheat, you can make uh, leavened bread or yeast bread. You can also use it for things um, that don't require leavening but the big thing is it provides more protein and i think in a situation like you know uh, storing long-term survival food you want to go for the high protein and, and i it, it feels to me like and i'm not a professional baker so take this with a grain of salt but it feels to me like the hard wheat berries are just more flexible more protein you can make leavened and unleavened bread though the unleavened bread pastries pancakes may not be as good and i'm guessing that probably is the case um, so a better approach to this might be store the bulk of your your wheat as hard wheat berries you know the hard hard winter uh, hard red winter wheat hard white winter wheat and then you can start adding in some of the other uh, wheats in smaller portions you know things like durum wheat to make to make pasta uh, uh, spelt grain and some of the ancient wheats. Uh, the ancient wheats are expensive and they, they would be difficult to pad your entire um, storage with because they're so expensive, because they're somewhat unavailable. But what you could do in that case is you could, you could use them in uh, smaller quantities and or if you have the, the right environment, you could actually start growing that stuff. But I think when you're starting out with building your um, survival foods, you want to stick with the hard grains. Hard white or hard red wheat berries, which is best for storage. Uh, hard red, uh, red winter wheat usually contains the most protein, but hard white wheat is said to make the best tasting bread. So flavor and protein content are both important. And some of this information, okay, so there are thousands of different uh, varieties of wheat and they're actually experimenting. So some of the hard wheat, hard white wheat has higher protein content now, but you're gonna have to search that and, and it's gonna be based on like where you're buying your wheat from and what strain of wheat they're using. But overall, the protein, the hard wheat with the most protein is gonna be your hard red wheat berry. Uh, from my reading, it's a little bit more gamey, it's a little bit more weedy, more kind of I don't know, whole, gr uh, whole grain tasting. So you want to experiment with that. If, if you don't think it's something you're going to eat, get a little bit of white, get a little bit of red, possibly even mix the two. And uh, so that might be a good approach. Uh, good tasting food cut downs on palate fatigue. We know that's important. It's part of the psychology of, you know, part of the psychology of survival. But sufficient protein is... Uh, pretty important too. More than likely, if you're looking at wheat berries, you also have rice, you also have beans. Beans we know are high in protein. So 
it may not be as much of an issue, but then again, we go back to flexibility. We go back to redundancy. Isn't it better to have more foods with high protein than less foods? Uh, you know, I mean, who knows? Maybe some somehow you lose your grain store or somehow you lose some of your beans. Then you've got that backup in place with a higher protein uh, wheat. One thing is for sure, if you don't like the bread you make, you won't eat it in your regular diet. So keep that in mind. Yeah, if you're starving, you're going to eat you're going to eat it. You're going to eat red wheat if you don't, even if you don't like the, the taste of it. But why go that route? Why do that to yourself? <clears throat> uh, you can check out, uh, because it may be somewhat uh, interesting to you, check out Ready Squirrel's article on readysquirrel.com, how to make yeast from flour and water. That is the ancient method of making yeast. Uh, it's the ye There's yeast everywhere. There's yeast in the air. You basically take water. You take uh, flour that you've ground and hard wheat and you make what's called a starter. It's kind of like a, it'll bubble. You'll, you'll basically make this small amount of dough that you can mix into your regular flour in place of yeast. So if you have flour and you have water, you can always make yeast. You don't need to worry about storing it. The downside of that, or, or you know, quote unquote, the downside of that is it, it is actually um, sourdough yeast. But the thing with that is where it's not really an issue is um, like artisanal bread makers, they spend a lot of time, a lot of experimentation to try to get that, that uh, the sourdough tasting yeast. You know, a lot of people don't like sourdough. The people that like it love it. But the chances of you getting a really soury sourdough uh, starter are not that good. So I've made uh, loaves of bread from um, from starter that I've made using just uh, bread, uh, uh, flour and water. And the bread was excellent. And it did have a little tiny bit of sourness, but not something like, you know, like a San Francisco sour bread. Nothing like that. So this is a redundancy, knowing how to do this. It's a good backup. And, uh, you know, yeast has shelf life. So a lot of times that's, you know, that's an issue. It's a weak point in your long-term storage, not having yeast. This is just something else for your arsenal. Uh, and it's good to know. Uh, what is a wheat berry? A wheat berry is a whole wheat kernel with the husk removed. After removing the husk, what remains are the bran germ and the endosperm. Wheat, wheat berries are from wheat grown in cold weather climates. They're the form of wheat stored for the long, longest shelf life. So these are wheat berries. The outer husk is removed. Now let's see if I can find my place again. Uh, wheat kernels with a husk have a higher oil content, so they go rancid in storage. And the flour ground from wheat berries deteriorates decades before whole wheat berries. So what am I saying? You want to store the wheat berries. You don't want to store the flour. Uh, if you're storing it for long-term storage, you can get what maybe f I, there's all there's stuff all over the map with this. You know, if you have a truly oxygen-free container with a good oxygen barrier, like a Mylar bag, surrounded by a food-grade bucket, you use the proper oxygen absorber. The wheat was 10% moisture or less going in. You keep it in a somewhat cool, dry place. Flowers. You know, I've seen instances where flour lasts up to 10 years, but more often than not, it's considered that the wheat berry lasts decades more than the flour. So uh, there's a lot of uh, information, a lot of examples out there of people having wheat berries that have lasted 30 plus years. You know, we, we always get into the shelf life thing, like with canned foods and, and the best buy dates. You know, okay, so the best buy date on a can of food is five years out. Well, not really. There are cans of food, if properly stored, that may be at their best buy date will that will still be good um, 30, maybe 30 years out if they're properly stored. So that's when you have to use your senses, your sense of smell. You have to look, you have to see and make your determination on your food stores to know whether or not you want to eat it. Um so again, wheat kernels, things, uh, the wheat kernels, the wheat husk and wheat has a high oil content. It's just like one of the reasons that we don't store uh, brown rice, why you don't get more than 18 months out of it, high oil content. So moisture uh, kills food in an oxygen-free environment and actually can lead to botulism and um, fats uh, will oxidize quickly. 
So you want that's why you're doing wheat berries versus you know storing whole wheat. Uh, this is kind of interesting, and this is an aside: farro versus wheat berries, which is best for storage. Farro is wheat berries made from wheat grown in hot climates versus wheat berries grown in cold climates. The most common types of farro are made from ancient wheat varieties like einkorn, spelt, and emmer. If you look these up, there's a lot of information on them. There's a lot of people that are doing permaculture and self-gardening and self-grain growing that are going back to some of these older uh, wheats. And when I mean older, I'm talking thousands of years. Um, Roman soldiers ate all three of these wheats. I believe it was spelt that they preferred. They called spelt the marching grain. Uh, high in protein, high in nutrition. Um, farro also differs uh, from wheat berries in how it is used. And that really is kind of, that's kind of the turning point or the, the juxtaposition. It doesn't seem to make sense. Well, they're both wheat berries, man. Come on, who cares if it's cold climate or if it's uh, a warmer climate? Well, the reason there's a difference is it's kind of, uh, well, let me, let me just go to it. Farro is usually cooked and eaten more like you would eat rice. Like any other wheat berry, it can be used to make bread, pastries, and other baked goods, but it is typically eaten boiled whole. Cold wheat berries, on the other hand, can also be cooked and eaten whole, but they are typically used in baked goods. So really, I think what this is, is this is more of a cultural thing. It's where the grain came up. It's the easier way to use it. You know, it's a lot easier to uh, boil uh, a grain and eat it than it is to, to say, uh, grind the wheat on the march, for instance. You know, you can make it into a porridge. You can throw in meat you've got. You can throw in foraged uh, herbs that you may have. Whatever you got, you can throw it in. You can make a stew. You can make a soup, and it's easier to use. So wheat berries and farro are typically stored long-term instead of wheat flour because wheat in this form has a much longer shelf life. To maintain a bulk of your wheat with a 30-year shelf life, grind berries into flour as you use them instead of in large batches. Uh, I have a list down below for the common wheat, wheat types and their uses. It's not comprehensive because there's so many kinds of wheats. So if you're going to buy wheat from a place, uh, just you know go to the website and read up on it, on you know what they're doing, what kind of grain they're using. Because as you know, when you you start crossing different kinds of wheat, uh, uh, you know there's wild wheat, there's wheats that you know uh, keep pests away. There's more of the old hybrid style, uh, or not hybrid, but um, uh, heirloom style wheats. Uh, so you could really get into this. And one of the things that connects well with, with storing different kinds of wheat berries is bread making, which on top of that, bread making uh, can also segue to brewing because the yeast that you can create in the process uh, can also use, be used to make beer. So uh, as an aside, your grains could actually become what you do post SHTF. You could be the bread maker. You could be the beer maker. You could be the guy making the bread and selling, um, selling the yeast for bread, uh, for beer making or for, for brewing. So something to keep in mind. The best wheat berries for uh, long-term storage. You can use any wheat berry for flour for any purpose, but you will get superior results if you use flour with characteristics that fit the food you're making. The wheat berries most commonly used in long-term storage are hard red and hard white wheat because they contain the highest protein and gluten content for bread making. I don't want to get too into this. I don't want to bore you, but uh, let's see. How many kinds of wheat do I have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We've got 11 kinds of wheat here. You'll notice the shelf life here if stored properly in an oxygen-free environment where, again, we're talking... Uh, a mylar bag, properly sealed mylar bag with a 2,000 cc oxygen absorber if you're storing it in a five gallon pail um, and you keep it in a cool dry location. All of these weights will give you 30 plus years. If you go on, you know, if you, if you were thinking, oh, I don't want to have to deal with uh, um, my grains that way, I would rather just go through during good times, use an electric grinder and process all my wheat berries before I package them. Just know that you're not going to get these 30 plus year shelf lives. And I'll talk about that down below, but this might be a good time to mention it. Uh, wheat can be, wheat berries can be stored for 30 plus years in your emergency food pantry and maintain 80% plus 
of nutritional value. That's pretty big. So the other issue, well, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. You know I do that. Okay, so these are some types of wheat that you can look into. Then I had the most common uses over here. Don't this, you know, these primary uses when cooking are not written in stone. These are just what they've historically been used as. And it seems to me when when things are historically used for a specific purpose, more than likely they're used that way for a reason. You know, there's been some experiment experimentation throughout history, and people have determined that spelt is better for. Uh, well, that one's kind of not a good example because it's the, the reading I did, yeast bread. Uh, spelt is good for yeast bread, pasta, biscuits, and crackers. Uh, for instance, here, let's say durum. Pasta is good for pasta and unleavened bread. It's ground for semolina flour, thick, sticky, gluten, uh, gluten high protein. So this wheat's probably not going to make a great pancake. Could you make uh, flatbreads with it? Absolutely. Would they be good? Possibly. Uh, would pancakes be good with durum wheat? Uh, you know, I got to question that. Probably not. So there's going to be some experimentation in here. But once you get beyond the hard red spring, hard red winter, hard white wheats, you're going to want to experiment with these other wheats. Go in as a novice or as a beginner storing, storing these wheats. That's going to be your best bet. That's going to be the backbone or the foundation of your... Uh, your wheat storage, your wheat berry storage. Okay. How do you know if your wheat berries are still good? Keep them dry, 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 keep them dry. Uh, moisture will destroy your wheat. And that's that's really the, the only thing. You can really store wheat in, in hot weather. And uh, okay, so I'm, I'm getting... I'm getting off on a tangent again. My brain's going 1,000 miles an hour. Uh, keep them dry. Wheat berries stored free of moisture have an almost indefinite shelf life as long as you killed the bugs before storage. That goes back to uh, using the, oxygen, absor uh, the oxygen, oxygen absorbers and the mylar bag and sealing the bag properly. Within two weeks, your bugs are dead. Bugs, larga, uh, larva, and pupa. Temperature isn't as much of an issue with wheat as is moisture. Wheat berries have been found in Egyptian tombs that are still edible because the deserts of Egypt are bone dry. So think about that. I'm guessing that wheat was found in a, an earthen jar or urn and, you know, made from clay off of the, the you know, the, uh, the banks of the Nile. And that stuff it was still edible. Wheat berries are still good if they're light tan or red, smooth with little to no smell. Spoiled uh, wheat smells sour and may, may change in color and texture. If you have we uh, weevils or other bugs, berries will have an off odor, a high amount of dust, damaged berries, and small black specks. If you have like a bunch of weevils in a bucket of um, wheat, you're going to know it. When in doubt about whether wheat is good, throw it out or try growing it in the garden or uh, not don't sprout it to eat but you could sprout it to do like um, wheat grass start by storing wheat that is 12 percent or less moisture content and keep it dry avoid avoid storing wheat in moist locations like your basement you're looking at wheat berries that will outlast you if you store them properly best use of wheat berries uh, 13 uses in a survival pantry I always thought of wheat as bread um, and pasta possibly, uh, but there's a lot more that you can do with it. Wheat berries have to be cooked before you eat them, but they're still, uh, st but they are good for more than just being ground into flour and baked. You can also boil them to eat like hot cereal and sprout them for nutritional greens. Following are 13 foods you can make with wheat berries. Uh, boil and add to soups or chilies. Boil and eat like porridge. Boil and mix with vegetables or dried fruits. Grind to make flour for bread, pasta, and pastries. Sprout for greens. Wheat berry and rice salad. Add to bread cooked or sprouted. Uh, add to garden fresh salads. If you're, if you're gardening, uh, you know, you're making salads, you're making herbs. Uh, used to make pilafs. Pilaf is basically... Uh, cooking with stock broth and spices so instead of using water it's kind of like you know cooking lentils you can just cook lentils in, in water 
or you can use chicken broth, vegetable broth, and the spices that you've got saved in your pantry and make a more uh, appealing uh, meal for that. Again, good for the psychology side. And to uh, try to kick out some of that food, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Palate fatigue, I think is what they call it. Okay, so sprout for wheatgrass and juice. A hot soak in a thermos for a bug out situation. So you can, uh, this is uh, something that's often done on the Appalachian Trail for through hikers. There are uh, foods that you can soak. You can even cold soak some stuff. You're going to want to do a little bit of research on this uh, because some stuff doesn't soak well. But hot soaking can be done in a thermos for bug out situations. You know, you could have a five pound bag of hard red wheat in your satchel. Uh, you start a fire in the morning and you, you know, you boil water, you pour it over the wheat berries, you put the lid on the, uh, your thermos or whatever the, the uh, container is that you're using for bug out. You throw it in your backpack, uh, you stop for lunch or dinner and your, um, your wheat berries are soft enough to eat. Uh, hot fresh bread, uh, you can also broadcast the seeds and grow wheat in your garden. You know, of course, this is going to depend on your climate. Uh, certain wheats, uh, cold uh, cold climate or, uh, versus hot climate uh, wheats are going to do better. So you're going to have to do a little bit of research on that. Uh, best methods of processing wheat berries to eat. Uh, you can boil uh, wheat berries and eat them like porridge or hot cereal. Add honey, fruit, or preserves, and you've got a tasty meal. Pre-soaking the berries is not necessary, but they do have to be cooked. Boil wheat berries uh, to cook, five steps, rinse them in a colander. I don't do that, but that's, that's the, uh, that is the recipe. That's the common recipe of how you do it. Rinse berries in a colander un, uh, until the water runs clear. Half a cup of wheat berries uh, to one and one quarter cups of water or broth when you're boiling it. Uh, bring, to a bo- bring the mixture to a boil. Simmer 45 to 60 minutes. That'll yield one and one eighth cup of cooked berries. You can also cook uh, wheat berries in a crock pot, an instant pot, instant pot, or a pressure cooker. I don't have directions for that. Uh, number two, you can grind berries into flour. This is uh, takes a lot more work if you're doing it by hand than than I would have imagined. Flour has a relatively short shelf life, so you're better off grinding flour as you need it versus doing large batches. And you'll need a grinder for this. Uh, most preppers use an electrical mill when the power is on because grinding wheat by hand is hard work. It's a good idea to have a manual hand grinder as backup for SHTF or power out scenarios. Uh, prepare from st- for some sticker shock though when you uh, when you're shopping for quality grain mills, electric or uh, the hand grain mills. The good ones are like super expensive, but uh, uh, the other thing that you can do is you can sprout wheat berries. Uh, Even in winter and without sunlight, you can sprout wheat berries for emergency nutrition. Hard red winter wheat berries are said to be the best for sprouting. You can also grow micro uh, micro greens in the form of wheatgrass and uh, juice them for high nutrition. How how long will wheat berries store? Wheat berries will store for 30 years while maintaining 80% or more of their uh, nutritional value. You get a shelf life like this by packaging berries in an oxygen-free container with proper storage, cool, dry, and dark. Wheat's moisture content should be 10% or less before packaging and storage. And that I got that from a guide to food storage for emergencies. Uh, Brian Numer, food safety specialist from uh, State uh, Utah State University. And if you go over to readysquirrel.com, you can click on that link, and I've got a downloaded PDF. That This, a guide to food storage for emergencies, is uh, LDS, and it's uh, it's pretty good. Uh, I, I actually attach it to quite a few articles. Packaging wheat berries for long-term home storage. For a do-it-yourselfer, there's no better method of storing dry goods than with the awesome container trio, mylar bags, food-grade buckets, and oxygen absorbers. I'm not going to go through all the steps, but here you see there's nine steps on how to do this. Uh, you can read these or you can go over to readysquirrel.com and I've got a video of me doing uh, or storing um, beans and rice. How should I store wheat berries? Store wheat berries with less than 10% moisture content in low humidity with storage temperatures of less than 75 degrees uh, Fahrenheit and above freezing. 
Use containers that provide an oxygen barrier like sealed mylar bags with an oxygen absorber to protect food from oxidation and to kill bugs, eggs, and pupa. And really, when you're when it comes to wheat, the the main reason that you're putting stuff, putting wheat in mylar bags and using the oxygen absorbers to create that oxygen-free uh, environment is to keep moisture out and to kill bugs. Uh, you're not going to be able to buy grain that doesn't have bug eggs in it unless it's been fumigated. And then if that's the case, you probably don't want to eat it. The best wheat berry storage containers, mylar bags, food grade buckets, and oxygen absorbers are the best wheat berry storage containers. Mylar bags provide an oxygen barrier. Food grade buckets act as armor for your bags. And oxygen absorbers remove oxygen from the mylar bag. Prevent the oxidation of food and kill bug, eggs, and pupa. Uh, the thing about just putting your, your grains, your dry goods in food grade buckets is they're not actually a true, a truly, uh, they're not a true oxygen barrier. There is a transfer of air through plastic. So there are times when this works, you know, people store sugar without O2 absorbers, that works well. And there are times when you can store grain and not have an issue, but if you have bug eggs uh, and you store in a food grade bucket, I don't know, you may have an outbreak of, uh, uh, of weevils, of wheat weevils, and you'll open a bucket when you need it and it'll be, it won't be edible. What's the difference between food and non-food grade buckets? If you're interested in that, uh, go over to readysquirrel.com. You can click on the link. Do I need to freeze wheat berries before storage? Old school preppers often freeze dry goods before storage. This kills all stages of bug life present in uh, grains. Most grains, again, will have bug eggs when you get them. If you use a container that provides an oxygen-free environment, you don't, do not need to freeze wheat berries before storage. Bug eggs and pupa will be dead within two weeks in an oxygen-free container. Uh, create an oxygen-free storage environment in any container that provides a quality oxygen barrier. The best DIY method is by using food grade mylar bags, food grade pails, and oxygen absorbers. I've got some sources here. I must have cut this article down a little bit. I'm trying to do some shorter ones. Uh, you know, the thing about freezing is the, the, it's twofold. One, who has the room to, to uh, freeze two or 300 pounds of wheat, beans, or rice? And let's say you can get 10 pounds of uh, beans, rice, or wheat in your freezer. You've got to leave that to freeze for five days, and then you got to do the next. Uh, you've got to do the next ten pounds. So for for a fifty five or a fifty pound bag, you're looking at what twenty five days, almost a month, to process a, a fifty pound bag of, of wheat. So if you had three hundred pounds of wheat, you're looking at three months. It just makes sense to if you can, you know, if you don't have the the uh, resources, you can freeze small portions of wheat. That works. Or you can do it slowly over the long haul. But if you're doing stuff in bulk, uh, oxygen absorbers and mylar bags are 100% the way to go. Okay, this is Scott over at readysquirrel.com. Uh, you guys take care, stay salty, and I'll see you next time.